Hello folks. My gosh, what on earth is this in my hand? Hi, it's Rich here. If you don't know me, I am a novice guitarist. I like guitars. They're pretty, why wouldn't I? This is guitar number 94. And it's um, it's a relic. I don't do relics. It's really not my thing. However, this particular one has caught my eye for a long time. It's a vintage. Uh, I've seen a number of videos on it. It's been about two years, I guess, that I've sort of liked it, but never acted upon it. A few reasons, really. I've had some vintage uh, LPs before, and the QC on them is a bit iffy, although the guitars themselves have been good. The sustain on them and the way they play has been really nice. But yeah, never really been into a relic, and you don't see these used very often. In fact, they're even new, actually. They're some fairly hardish to get hold of. Uh, anyway, so. As you know, I sold Savannah, my PRS, which I fell out of love with, and I bought the Ibanez SA160, which is a brilliant guitar for what it is. But weirdly, I just kind of got used to the shorter scale length for a while on the on the PRS, and yeah, it just felt really, really, really different at Ibanez. So I don't know. I just thought I'm gonna get I'm gonna get myself another LP of some sort, and then I thought I don't want to spend too much money. That's one thing. What do I want? Don't really know. I thought vintage. I've had, like I said, I've had a number of vintage guitars, and including Strats and Tellys as well. And I did think for a while I'm just going to have just you have vintage as a brand because they do copies of all of the main guitars for a lesser price and they're generally good quality. So I thought, what shall I have? And this came to mind again, and I, which is the JBM model, Joe Bonamassa model, although it's not. Strictly speaking, call that they call it the jazz blues machine, <laughs> but it is based on Joe Bonamassa's uh, um, LP. So I did something crazy as well. I bought it new, and as we know, they don't hold their value well. Vintage guitars, if you buy them new, you're going to keep them really, or just be prepared to lose half the money over the night. But uh, didn't see one second hand. Gear for Music had this, it's the last one they had in stock. I ordered it yesterday at about half past four in the afternoon and it arrived this morning at 11 o'clock, which can't moan at £4.99 delivery overnight, just like that. And I've got to say, I'm absolutely blown away by it. First of all, no sharp fret ends at all. No finish flaws on it, although it's a relic, so I suppose <laughs> you might argue, how can you find a finish flaw? But the action is right down. It is so playable. Because the, the neck is smooth, I mean, I'm not a fast player, as you know, but my fingers can move around this so much more quickly than anything I've played recently. Uh, it's got a, a sort of a, a D shape or a U shape, more of a D, fairly, fairly thinnish neck as well, which is very similar to a lot of the Les Pauls that I've had. Now, Les Paul boys, I've had a Gibson Les Paul Studio. I've had several Epiphones, Custom, Custom Pro, Standard, Studio, this is my fourth one of these. Obviously, I had the PRS. Uh, I'm just trying to think what other Les Pauls I've had. I've had the Nibonez ART120 LP style guitar, and I've always liked the, the vintage. I thought they're good, and this is no exception. So, what? So, what do you get? You get this relicking, like it or loathe it. I don't really mind it actually because a, it just doesn't bother me, and b, you can't really see a lot of it when you're playing it, can you? So, if you didn't like it, it doesn't really matter. But you've got a new bone nut, which is great. Uh, not too sure what this fretboard is. It doesn't tell you. Vintage are really weird. They'll tell you what the neck's made of. Don't tell you what the fretboards are. It's either rosewood or roasted jatoba. I've got a funny feeling this might be a fairly light rosewood. It's a bit dry. And as you can see from my uh, finger ends, the string's absolutely filthy. So they do need replacing. But it's, it's got a nice, nice sort of carve on the top, the back of it. People don't like relics, they're going to be sick when they see this, but, but not fuss point. Neck joint, very similar to one on the PRS. It is just so easy to play. Um, the tuners, the Wilkinson, obviously Wilkinson and everything, they're very much like Grover's. It is a much, much better guitar than I imagined it would be. Even though I haven't seen a bad review on this, all the reviews, people rave about them. It's lovely. Uh, my only tiny, my only tiny gripe is the tone pots act a bit, a bit like that Harley Benton SE400. 
they act more like another volume pot, pot really. Let me show you. So I've just got on the neck here. I'll uh, turn the amp up down, down a little bit. So this is with the tone all the way to the top. Oh. Strings are a bit all over the place, that's out of tune. Just put up with it being out of tune. <laughs> oh. Anyway, tone right way up. Let's top it, roll it back to about seven. about three or four and then north is it even coming yeah so to me that tone sounds exactly the same it's just gone really quiet so and it's the same on both tones the one on the neck pickup as well so i don't know if that's a bit of a fault or a bit of a weirdy thing i don't know i might have that looked at because it is useful to have a tone pot that works but the, uh, the, yeah, just the general clean channel. Hard to play with the plaster on your finger. Middle. That's one thing I remember most about my last vintage V100 I had. Sustained just rings and rings. And actually weight-wise, it's it might be a little bit lighter than Savannah was. On PRS245, for those who don't know who Savannah is. So it's not like it weighs an absolute ton. Um, nice it's 12 inch radius not too thick not too thin just perfect and uh, obviously with satin so no stickiness just super super quick feeling it's really nice right uh, on the crunchy crunchy channel <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, so like I say, for, for some decent playing, have a look at another <laughs> another video from someone else because there's plenty of them. But this totally lives up to, uh, well, it exceeds my expectations. First of all, QC wise, everything seems spot on. Time pots aside, uh, it's it's reassuringly weighty but it doesn't weigh a ton it's well balanced the neck is that honestly to die for i've had 94 guitars so i've had lots of necks to feel <laughs> and this feels great that satin feel on the back um just get your hands around it and i'm just amazed at how well set up is so well done vintage for uh for doing that um yeah and then the tones out of it as well i'm only just starting to have a little bit of a play around with it having only got it this morning but what a guitar for the money. What a beast for the money. Made in Vietnam. Yeah, the JBM model. So glad I finally got it. And I think this is going to be a resurgence for me in vintage guitars. Now, I just reminded because I had the vintage Thomas Blug Strat. It's got a very, it's got a seven and a half inch radius on the neck on that. So it's very narrow, but that Strat was great as well. The sounds that came out of that thing. So yeah, there you go. Vintage, well worth a check out. And uh, there'll be some more videos on this at a later point, I'm sure. Well, definitely. And like I say, if you're interested in hearing some some other sounds out of it, so I just move that like just do a Google and have a look. So there are some brilliant videos online of what this thing can really do and sound like. Thanks very much for watching. Rich out.